Welcome back to the newest episode in this series on proofs. In this one, we will be exploring one of the most powerful tools of mathematics, geometric reasoning. You see, geometry is useful because it provides a valid way to simplify a problem provided that you are doing geometry correctly. In fact, the ancient Greeks almost exclusively used geometry, and geometry was a major part of mathematics for years to come around the globe. Thanks to Euclid and his work Elements, we have some axioms to lay the groundwork for what is and isn't acceptable. His five postulates are as follows. With any two points, a line between them is always possible. Two, any segment or section of a line can be extended to an infinite length line. Three, a circle can be made from any line segment using this segment as the radius and tracing around with a compass, but we won't need to worry too much about this axiom. Four, all right angles are congruent, or they have the same properties geometrically is another way of saying it. And finally, that parallel lines never intersect, and for a given line, and a point that is not on that line, there is one unique parallel line. As an example of axiomatic reasoning in geometry, let's look at how we can prove that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, a very well-known theorem since ancient times. If we threw away the final postulate and enabled parallel lines to no longer exist the way that we think they do, we would have geometry on the surface of a sphere, so like how we exist on the surface of Earth, where the lines, in this case, are circles of the same radius as the sphere they're on, and they satisfy the property that these great circles are the shortest path between any two points on the sphere, and this is something we'd want from a line. So. This would be walking around the equator is the shortest path to go from any spot on the equator to any other spot on the equator. And if we walked a path, all right, starting from the North Pole to the equator, it made a 90 degree turn and walked 90 degrees longitude and then made a right angle heading north, we would have made a triangle with three 90 degree angles and that has a total sum of 270 degrees. So from this, it is obvious that we need the parallel postulate as it is called to prove that the inner angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. This is really what I want you to take away from this video, is how we can use geometric intuition to draw up proofs and figure out what rules we need to prove certain statements. Now on to the proof. So let's start with our parallel postulate and draw two parallel lines, making sure that they're not on top of each other. To make our triangle, we will draw a line that intersects these lines, so it's just one coming at an angle, and then another line that intersects with the intersection of the previous lines. So we'll have at a point, we'll have three lines intersecting for three points of the triangle. So with these three lines, excluding the added initial parallel line, we can see that we have a triangle with angles A, B, and C. Now, because all 90 degree angles are congruent, this implies that if two lines intersect in the same way, their angles are the same. So the angle A is repeated up here, and the angle C is repeated over here because they intersect in the same way. Now, along the line we made, the angles A, B, and C complete the 180 degree turn of the line therefore demonstrating that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Notice that this proof works for all triangles because I made no restrictions on what type of triangle we constructed, and so our proof applies to all triangles that can be constructed the way we have here, which are all triangles that aren't the degenerate case, which is a straight line. And the degenerate case is, it's when you can construct it, but it doesn't have the properties that you want. Now, we didn't end up using all the postulates that Euclid formulated, but when you do use all of them, you can create a very rich geometry in which a world of constructions are possible, such as a proof of the Pythagorean theorem, or the area of a triangle. And I hint at these proofs in the last episode, but unfortunately, these episodes can't last forever, and these proofs can remain as interesting challenges or potential future videos. But for the next episode, there's a certain formula that is used far too often without justification in high school math, and it needs to be brought to justice. This is, of course, the infamous quadratic formula, and will be the subject of the next video. And as always, keep on learning.